Today, you're going to learn about isolated elbow movement. If you're someone that has had damage to your neurologic system, there is a good chance that you are either having trouble extending your arm or bending your arm or both. And depending on what's causing it, the exercises are going to be slightly different. So by the end of this video, you're going to know what might be causing you to not be able to move your arm normally. And of course, the best exercises for you, depending on the root cause of your movement impairment in your arm. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health, to live an overall more active, more mobile, pain-free, happier, healthier life. Now, before we dive into today's video, there is a PDF handout that goes along with today's video that will have pictures and descriptions of all the exercises that we go through, just to make it super easy for you to start incorporating these exercises into your home exercise routine. Those PDF handouts are available for our gold and our bronze monthly members. To learn more about our membership programs, as well as all the other perks that come along with your membership, visit www.rehab-hq.com. All right, now before we dive into the progression of exercises to restore normal isolated elbow movement, it is important to discuss a little bit about what causes your arm not to move normally after damage to your neurologic system so that you can get to the best exercises for you and you don't waste your time doing exercises that might not be the straightest path to getting back to normal arm movement. So first, what are the two main reasons that you might not be able to move your arm after damage to your neurologic system? It has to do with spasticity and abnormal movement patterns. If you've been around for a while, you know that I talk about these two the factors quite a bit. Spasticity is an involuntary contraction in the arm and can interfere with normalizing arm movement. Now, the reason for that is, is when a mu muscle is involuntarily contracting, the muscle on the opposite side usually has a harder time of getting the arm to move in the opposite direction. So for most of you, or for a lot of people after a neurologic injury, you get a lot of spasticity or involuntary contraction in the bicep muscle. So straightening the arm out can become problematic because your tricep now has to fight against all of the resistance that's being created by that bicep pulling your arm into a flex position. So straightening the arm out might be complicated if you have spasticity in your bicep or weakness in your tricep. In most cases, it's probably a combination of both. Okay, so that is how spasticity can interfere with restoring normal elbow movement. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about this product that this company sent to me called the Core Stretch. Now, when I first saw this product, I actually reached out to the company to see if they would send me one to sample because of the design of this product for so many uses in the neuro rehab community. Now, the main purpose of this is to stretch the back out, which I think it does a fabulous job. It has these two pads at the bottom. You just kind of place them right in the crux of your hip. You reach your arms out and you really do feel a great stretch just by leaning forward. There's a pivot on the base so you can actually rotate side to side and it really does feel great to stretch your back because the counter force is kind of right at your hips. It really does elongate that spine. However, when I saw the product, the design of it is what had me interested because of all the other uses in the neuro rehab community that you can do with this. For instance, many of you have seen me use the Swifter to work on early stage arm movement. Well, this device, which is originally intended to be a stretching device, can actually do the same thing. So you just put your hands on the top and it gives you a really nice early phase arm movement exercise if you're someone that is working on reaching. Right, so you just sit. And what we would call this is kind of active assist, using your other arm to assist in that forward reach. Now, 
It is height adjustable, which a lot of you have seen me do with the Swifter where I set it on different height surfaces. This, you don't actually have to do that. You can just, because it's got this height adjustable feature, you can make the, the exercise more difficult by just making it longer. And now you're pushing those arms kind of uphill a little bit. So to advance that reaching activity, you can just extend the arm and push it uphill. Now, once you get really good at that, you can put one hand on it and kind of do the same thing. Now, because it has a pivot point, it's going to make it a little bit more challenging to keep your arms straight. So that's why I usually recommend that you use your other arm to help a little bit in the early stages just to kind of set yourself up for success. But there's more that you can do with this that I've been messing around with, and that is to use it for standing activities. So in standing, it's the perfect tool for those of you where your arm draws up when you walk. I've talked about this in other videos, but that's usually when the lower body and the upper body kind of link up together abnormally. So when you're walking and you're trying to control your legs, your arm kind of what I usually call in therapy is just trying to kind of help out, but not doing a really good job of it. So you try and put more effort into working your legs and that arm draws up. I've made complete videos on this where we work on breaking up that pattern by giving some kind of uh, an, a challenge for the arms to keep the arms straight and work on standing balance to kind of separate or break up that upper body and that lower body. This tool is perfect for that. Now I am 5'2", and this is the tallest height. So if you're taller, you would just need to set it up on something. So you're just going to hold on to it and just push it forward and either do a weight shift and a knee lift or a step with the main goal being that you keep pushing those arms forward. Again, breaking up that tendency or breaking up that pattern where your arm wants to draw up when you're standing. If your arm automatically draws up when you stand up, then you just work on weight shifting. Again, trying to push this forward and shift, lift the heel, shift and lift the heel. But again, anyway, the original intent of this product was to get that nice back stretch, which it doesn't excellent job of doing that. But then if you are someone with a neurologic injury, there are all these other ways that you can use this one tool. Link to learn more about this product is in the description below. As usual with any product that I advertise or I talk about on this channel, Rehab HQ does receive a small commission. So if you do purchase this product, we are so, so grateful for your support of this channel. But more than that, you are going to get a very useful product. But now let's talk about the abnormal synergy patterns because this is really where a lot of like the nuance comes into play that there is not a black and white answer and not everyone is going to benefit from the same exact exercises when it comes to restoring normal isolated elbow movement. But first let's just talk about abnormal synergy patterns. As a review for most of you, uh, an abnormal synergy pattern is when groups of muscles link up abnormally together. This is quite common after damage to your neurologic system. Some believe that it is one of the stages in recovery, similar to how normal development occurs. If you think about infants, and I do bring this up quite a bit because it is important and it's a good visual for all of you, babies are either all flexion or they're all extension. If they want to roll in one direction, they'll flex their arms up. If they want to roll on their back, they'll straighten their arms out. If they want to scoot across the floor on their stomach. It's usually just all flexion, all extension. Then as they mature, their brains mature, they start to be able to coordinate movement and move out of synergy patterns, meaning they can isolate joint movements and not have all of those joints moving at the same time. That's what we're referring to when we talk about an abnormal synergy pattern because it's abnormal because that synergy pattern gets integrated when we're going through normal development. When it re-emerges as an adult, it is now an abnormal synergy pattern. So what I like to say is that what we try and do is if you believe the theory that this is one of the stages in the motor recovery process, meaning that you will move in patterns before you isolate movement, that once you can move the arm, you want to quickly move to activities that we will call out of synergy. So first let's talk about a flexor synergy pattern. What's going on when someone has an abnormal flexor synergy pattern? 
Well, when the bicep bends up, a lot of times the arm is going to either internally rotate or externally rotate. Now, how can it be both? After a stroke, it's usually because there's um, spasticity and abnormal synergy patterns going on. So typical abnormal synergy is flexion with external rotation, but because a lot of times people have spasticity in their internal rotators, what you see more commonly after a stroke is internal rotation with elbow flexion. So anytime you want to move the arm, the elbow automatically flexes up, the arm internally rotates and kind of comes across the front of you like this. That is an abnormal flexor synergy pattern. So if you're trying to restore normal elbow movement and you're someone that has a predominant flexor synergy pattern, we want to isolate elbow flexion with external rotation without letting it do that, without letting the arm come in and across this way. And to a lesser degree, do elbow flexion without shoulder flexion. So kind of with the arm down by your side, not letting it come up into this position. That would be an isolated elbow movement out of synergy, okay? Now let's talk about an extensor synergy pattern. An extensor synergy pattern is when you want to, when the elbow straightens out, the arm kind of gets glued to the side and it internally rotates and it extends back that way. That's an extensor synergy pattern. If you did any one of those movements, they kind of all happen together. So that internal rotation with extension, elbow extension is key. So what do we want to do? We want to try and do elbow extension. So this would be out of synergy with shoulder flexion. So with the arm up in this direction and external rotation, that would be kind of like an out of synergy pattern. So that's just an example to help you kind of understand the exercises when we get to them as to how you decide which ones are best for you. But now let's just talk about how do you know if you have a flexor synergy pattern or an extensor synergy pattern, or if you even need to worry about that at all. I would say step one is if you're trying to learn how to straighten the arm out, do it on your uninvolved side first. If it doesn't look the same on your, involve, on your involved side as it does on your uninvolved side, just be curious about that. What doesn't look the same? So if you bend this arm up, I can keep my arm in this direction and I can keep my palm facing up and I can bend my elbow saying this is my uninvolved arm. If when I go to do it on this arm, the arm turns in, then all you really have to do, you don't have to be a therapist, you just have to be like a really good observer or have a caregiver who's a really good observer. Well, if this arm can come up like this and this arm can't, it always has to go in this position, then we want to try and do it with the palm facing up and without letting the arm come across. So that's important. So if you always notice that you're doing this every time you try and move your arm, we want to try and work isolated elbow movement with external rotation. If you notice that it's always coming up, we want to try and do elbow flexion with the arm extended or back, not letting the arm come forward, okay? So not letting the whole arm come forward when you try and bend your elbow up. If you notice that your arm always rotates out when you bend it up, then we want to bring it back into extension because remember, this is the synergy pattern. The arm comes forward and work on elbow flexion with the arm back here and internal rotation. And we'll go into the exercises for that, okay? If you have an extensor synergy, what you will find is that your hand always kind of ro rotates in this way, or your arm always rotates in this way, and your arm likes to go back in this direction every time you extend it. So what do we want to do? We want to work isolated tricep extension with the arm forward in this position and externally rotated. So this is external rotation, this is internal rotation. In most cases, extension and external internal rotation go together. Shoulder elbow extension, straightening the arm out and internal rotation. So we want to work elbow extension with external rotation. Okay, and so those are the exercises we're going to go through today. Now, you really do kind of just have to spend some time, be curious, videotape, talk to caregivers, talk to people to figure out like what 
muscle groups are linking up abnormally together because that'll help you to get to the best exercises for you. But now let's go ahead and dive into the exercises. All right, we're gonna start with elbow flexion. The dowel rod is really, really important for elbow flexion and laying down is really important. So if you're someone where your arm comes up like this, if we're trying to work out of synergy, elbow flexion. So remember, a lot of you can bring your arm up like this, but remember you're using a synergy pattern. So you're kind of using kind of like a built-in hardwired pattern that is a beginner stage or the early stages of recovery, but we want to move beyond that where you can isolate elbow movement. The dowel rod with your palms facing up helps to stop the arm from internally rotating. Laying down allows us to use gravity to help keep the arm back. Remember, we're trying not to do this. We're trying to isolate elbow flexion without the shoulder movement. So again, palms facing up, laying down so that your elbows can stay in contact with the mat and you're just gonna curl up. Now, one thing you might notice if you have an abnormal synergy pattern is that your pinky wants to come off and that's because your arm is trying to do that internal rotation. So if that is you, I strongly recommend strapping your hand to the dowel rod to help prevent that. So you want, you want to strap all the fingers so that they can't peel off in that direction um, to the dowel rod. And that would be elbow isolated elbow flexion for those of you that are using a flexor synergy pattern to bend the elbow. All right, so I showed this exercise laying down because I do think it's the best way to visualize the movement that I'm trying to demonstrate for this exercise. But just please be advised, laying down is the hardest position to do this in. But remember what I said, the arm wants to come forward and bend up. So another good exercise to work out of synergy is to not allow the arm to come in front of your body when you bend the elbow up. And then remember I said some of you, when you flex your arm up, it kind of wants to go into external rotation. If you notice that that's happening, then trying to reach into your back pocket would be a good exercise to work towards. So for some of you, it's going to require a lot of stretching first. And I'm, we're going to get to an, the next exercise. I'm going to show you kind of where you would start if you can't get your arm back in that position and bend your elbow. But I showed this one first because this is what we're working towards. Shoulder extension, internal rotation, and flexion. Very, very elbow flexion. Very, very hard movement to get. So the arm's coming back, bending, and kind of like you're reaching in your back pocket. So let me show that to you again. Laying down just so that you can see it. Just know that you can do this standing and it will be easier to do in standing. But back, trying to get that hand kind of over your bottom. And if you can, getting it up even higher. Working that elbow flexion with the arm going back behind you. All right, so as I mentioned, that previous exercise for a lot of you is going to be a little bit challenging, getting that arm back and bending that elbow. So a great way to work on this passively to start uh, is to work on putting your hands on a chair. If you have someone that can help you to hold your hand back, because I know some of you, your hand's going to slide off. Definitely have someone who can hold your hand back on the chair. And then again, you're just using your body weight to passively bend that elbow and extend the shoulder at the same time. And for a lot of you, you definitely would benefit from holding this because um, there's probably some soft tissue structures that are a little bit tight as well that might interfere with that movement. So if you're doing this more for a stretch at this, at this point, then I would hold it for a minute just to get some nice mobility out of that shoulder.
All right, so now we're moving on to elbow extension. I always like to start with something that really challenges the elbow to kind of like automatically straighten. And anytime we're in a situation where our brain feels like we're going to fall, a lot of times some like uh, involuntary safety mechanisms can kick in. So I like to start with something where you might, we try and tap into that a little bit. So I love this movement. Uh, again, for those of you that are in the early stages, you're just going to scoot your bottom kind of off the front edge of the chair. And then if there's any protective mechanisms in that arm, they will kick in to help keep the arm straight. So that's just kind of an overall just activating the elbow extensors. And it's one that I really like to start with for start with for people that are in the early stages. Now, of course, use your judgment. If you if your arm just flexes up and you know it's not going to support your body weight, then definitely don't do it. I have some little kind of like tricks of the trade I do to kind of ease someone into that when they're working with me directly. But if you're doing this on your own, definitely use your judgment to know like if that whether or not that arm is going to be able to hold you up. But again, it's just kind of like a primer, just kind of like waking up any muscles that might be there that can help to keep that elbow straight. And then back, forward, and back. All right, so this is true isolated elbow extension out of a synergy pattern. Now, again, the dowel rod's really important because remember I said extension and internal rotation go together a lot. So keeping your hand, again, strapped to a dowel rod will help to keep that um, arm externally rotated. This is external rotation. This is internal rotation. Having that dowel rod will help to keep them externally rotated. Now, you will notice that what might happen when you go to extend is that the bar is gonna go all the way over towards your stronger side. You can see that's internally rotating this arm. You wanna try and keep those arms, your uh, those hands on equal distance from your nose. If your arms do this when you're trying to straighten your arm out, if this is your involved arm, that's probably because it's trying to internally rotate. So keep pay attention that there's a hand, is e each hand is equal distance from the midline of your body when you're doing this. And again, just straight up. Now, once you get good at that, another great out of synergy movement is shoulder flexion. This would be a little bit more advanced with elbow extension. Remember I said the arm likes to come down when you extend it. That's an extensor synergy pattern. So now we're going out of synergy because we're going up and extending those arms up overhead and extending those arms. Overhead and extending. All right, and then for this last exercise, we're working on, again, this elbow extension with the arm overhead. So, and we're getting some weight bearing out of this one, but really the key to this one is having this arm fixed to the wall and trying to keep that elbow straight. And then you're just gonna lift off with your opposite arm. If you can't keep your arm extended, you can put an elbow mobilizer on your arm. That might help or have someone hold your elbow in and then you're just lifting off your uninvolved arm, really trying to keep this arm straight, not letting your body collapse into the wall. So you do want your feet a little bit further back so you do feel like that there's pressure on this arm, and then you're just gonna keep it straight and lift off. <laughs> 